Hadoop stack for big data. Preface Content of this lecture. In this lecture, we will provide insight into Hadoop technologies, its opportunities and challenges for big data computing. We will also look into the Hadoop stack and the various applications and technology associated with it for big data solutions. Let us trace back the beginning of the Hadoop. So, today the leading big data technology is Hadoop which is an open source software framework for the reliable scalable distributed computing for big data analytics. So, this particular Apache Hadoop open source software framework is free and is used for software for storage and large scale processing of a big data sets on cluster of commodity hardware. So, we assume here in this case there exists a, a, a cluster of commodity machines which is nothing but in the form of the racks and several such racks will form a cluster of nodes. So, this particular Hadoop will run on this cluster machine and provides the solution for storage. So, storage will be available on these nodes which are hundreds and thousands of the nodes which Hadoop will use as a storage. Similarly, the computation on these particular data sets which are stored on this particular cluster will require the large scale computation uh, wherever the data is stored. So, the data, so this Hadoop will provide a framework for storage and the large scale processing large scale processing by this we mean that the data set is too large and it cannot fit in the existing conventional systems maybe whatever is the size of the conventional system, one system cannot basically accommodate the entire data set. So, for a large size data set, it requires hundreds and thousands of such machines uh, to store the data. Now, when a computation is to be performed on this particular data sets, then it is not possible to bring all the data at one place for the computation rather computation has to be moved wherever data is stored hence it is called a large scale processing or a computation of that particular data set and that is possible with the help of clusters which uh, of commodity hardware which comprises of hundreds and thousands of machines. So, in this particular discussion, we will uh, first see the, the functionality of Hadoop, we will see the, its beginning also and all these things we are going to discuss. So, again in a nutshell, we have to before we proceed, we have to understand that the today's leading technology leading big data technology is Hadoop which is a, which is an open source framework for reliable 
scalable distributed computing for the big data analytics. We will explain in this particular lecture what is we mean by the reliable, what we mean by the scalable and this particular entire setup of computation on a cluster is called distributed computing and the large scale data sets are being computed and being performed the analysis which is called a big data analytics which is useful for driving various applications all these things is uncovered under the Hadoop that is why today's leading big data technology is Hadoop. So, with this simple explanation now we will see into the Hadoop what this Hadoop means what are the different application it provides and which we are going to use for computing the big data. So, Hadoop was created by Doug Cuttings and Mike Caffarella in 2005 that is long back. It was originally developed to support the distribution of the Nudge search engine project. Doug Cutting who was working at Yahoo at that time who is now chief, chief architect at Cloudera named his project after his son's toy which is an elephant and named as Hadoop. So, Hadoop is the name given to this particular project out of this context. So, this particular icon which is there representing the Hadoop is that toy which duck cutting has named this particular project Hadoop. Now, let us go in more details of this particular leading big data technology which is Hadoop. Now, here we see that this big data is too large to be fit in to a particular system hence it is being stored in the cluster system. Now, if it is stored in hundreds and thousands of the nodes then the computation also has to be moved wherever the data is stored. See this particular arrows. So, this shows that the computation if you want to perform the computation on this large scale data sets. So, computation has to move wherever the data is stored and after doing the computation the results will be collected back to the same environment. So, hence the Hadoop is started out as a simple batch processing framework why because data is to be stored and that computation can be performed at any point of time and this is called a batch processing framework. So, Hadoop initially was designed as the simple batch processing framework and the idea behind the Hadoop is that instead of moving data to the computation here we have shown you in this particular picture the computation is moving. move to the data wherever data is stored and the computation is performing. Hence, the title says that moving the computation to the data is one of the main idea behind the success of the Hadoop which is the leading technology for big data. The second aspect is called scalability. By scalability we mean that, uh, that the whatever be the size and this particular size of particular data can be uh, processed, stored and being computed that is called scalability. This is achieved using hundreds and thousands of, of machines which is called a commodity hardware machines. Why commodity hardware? They are not very specialized or super specialized computers, they are normal computing uh, machines hence it is called commodity hardware and this ensures a uh, scalability. 
So, as this particular this is called a scale out, scale out technology says that if you keep on adding more resources, more hardware it will provide more resources to accommodate uh, this uh, kind of and this is called a scalability. So, again to repeat that the scalability is at the core of the design of Hadoop system and it is basically achieved out of hundreds and thousands of commodity hardware which is cheap computing devices for storage and for computations. So, hence a large data set is can be distributed across these hundreds and thousands of the machine and we can add these machines more in number uh, to scale without any modifications and we can get more improved performance if more number of such machines we keep on adding to accommodate the, uh, the, the, uh, the scale or the size of the data and also form the computation at higher speed in a very cost effective manner. Hence, it is called scalability. Now, another important thing is, so this is called reliability. So, when we say that we are using the hundreds and thousands of commodity machines, commodity hardware which are uh, not very sophisticated, hence they are prone to the failures. So, failure is a norm. And this is the uh, basically prime uh, design aspect which is called reliability that is the fault tolerance is one of the basic. Uh, uh, design uh, paradigm for uh, in the design of the Hadoop system that we will see. So, if we see that an individual machine or basically the rack of machines or a large cluster or uh, the, the big supercomputer, they can fail at any point of time or some of their components can also fail. <coughs> so, failure is uh, very common uh, that that have to be uh, uh, accounted. Uh, for this kind of failure uh, well ahead in time without any disruption in the application computation. So, and all of these are actually handled within the Hadoop framework. So, Apache's Hadoop MapReduce and SDFS component were originally derived from Google's MapReduce and Google's Google file system. So, there the design uh, of the Google file system and Google MapReduce already uh, has attended or handled this reliability or a fault tolerant as one of the basic design issue. So, we will see that how this is achieved here in the Hadoop system about reliability of these failures to tolerate with that. Now, here uh, doing all this uh, new approach to the data keeping all the data uh, uh, um, always. So, uh, we see that in the new approach in Hadoop, we are going to keep all the data we have and we can take the data and do the analysis in many interesting ways. So, we are not constrained about fitting the data into the schema and then storing it into that form, rather all the data will be kept as it is and whenever it is read, it will be fitted into the schema and being uh, available for the analysis. So, that means that keeping all the data, that means the data will be uh, while reading, while reading the data, it will be fit into the reading into the schema. So, this will simplify the analysis and uh, at the time of storing, uh, we have to just keep all the data without any constraint of uh, fitting it into the schema. And uh, this will bring into the more uh, data into the simple algorithms and the analysis becomes easier in, here in this case. So, while uh, we will discuss the analytics part, complex analytics when we perform on the big data, then we will see that this aspect of this particular design that is reading into the schema becomes uh, quite easier to design the complex analytics engine. So, with this different design issues which we have discussed, let us summarize them. One the issue which was called reliability the second design issues
that we have just covered let us summarize it first issue was the reliability scalability and keeping all the data so that while reading on the schema and this was the different and moving data to the computation moving computation to the data so these are the four different main design issues which basically has made the leading technology for big data computation which has made this hadoop as the leading technology for big data computation apache hadoop framework and its basic modules so apache hadoop has four different basic modules the first one is called hadoop common it contains the libraries and utilities needed by other hadoop model modules the second module is called hadoop distributed file system that is hdfs it is a distributed file system that stores the data on the commodity machines so this file system will ensure how this particular data or a big data is to be distributed and stored on across different hundreds and thousands of the nodes and keep track of all these data whether they are available or on the node whether the nodes are alive containing those data or they are not alive in all the cases this particular hadoop distributed file system will do the management and user will be given this kind of service so this hadoop will provide a very high aggregate bandwidth across the entire cluster so this storage and the retrieval of the huge amount of data over the commodity over the cluster will become uh, is possible here using hadoop uh, to provide this access at a very high aggregated bandwidth so that it is uh, its performance also we are going to cover in this part of the course now uh, the next module which is uh, another basic module of apache uh, hadoop is called yarn so yarn is the resource manager or it does the resource management for managing the compute resources in the cluster and using them in order to schedule the user and application so it is the resource manager and the scheduler by saying that resource manager and the scheduler means the resources which are available on the cluster uh, it will keep track of it and whenever is required by the different application it will do the scheduling that means it will allocate and schedule for uh, different uh, resources for different users and application that is called yarn in the map, in the hadoop and the fourth basic framework of hadoop is called mapreduce this is the programming paradigm and which will ensure the computations will reach wherever the data is using this particular paradigm that is called mapreduce so mapreduce is the basic programming model using which all the programs application programs can be can be designed uh, to run in this entire uh, cluster system so this particular programming model ensures that scalability uh, uh, is ensured while it is uh, achieving the performance uh, while computing the big data that we will see in more detail about all these four different modules of uh, apache hadoop so apache hadoop uh, basic modules we can see here and uh, in this particular uh, slide Uh, which basically is about the apache hadoop ecosystem 
let us see at the end or at the bottom most uh, part of this particular ecosystem here is an SDFS and below this the data will be pulled either through the flume or through the through the databases that is the ETL which will provide the data into this particular system which will be stored using Hadoop file system on the cluster. So, this SDFS Hadoop file system Hadoop distributed file system will run on the cluster. So, the hardware is the cluster on which this Hadoop distributed file system will run and yarn will be uh, running over top of SDFS. So, this SDFS is 2.0 version. So, yarn and MapReduce version 2 they will run on top of this SDFS and using yarn and MapReduce there are different uh, other applications of Hadoop system which will run that is called Uzi, Pig, Mahout and Hive, HBase, Scoop, Flume, Zookeeper. Now, let us see in more detail about all these different applications which are available in the Hadoop ecosystem and we will summarize them uh, their use and uh, they are going to be useful for the big data computation. Before going there let us see the high level architecture of the Hadoop. So, as you know that the Hadoop runs on the cluster system and cluster system comprises of hundreds and thousands of the nodes and each node uh, and they will be running different uh, applications or the modules of Hadoop system and we call them one such module is called the master, the other nodes are called the slave nodes. So, as far as MapReduce SDFS layer is concerned, so this particular master will contain, master node contains the module of SDFS layer which is called a name node and all other nodes will contain uh, another module of SDFS layer which is called a data node. So, all the data nodes which are running on different nodes uh, will communicate with the single name node of SDFS layer. Similarly, these nodes are also being used for uh, the, the MapReduce uh, layer. So, uh, the MapReduce layer will contain the task tracker, this particular uh, job of task tracker will run on those nodes. Similarly, there will be uh, for every uh, node there will be a task tracker and whenever the jobs are running they will basically form the task uh, job tracker. So, task trackers will be running on all the nodes and there will be a single job tracker. So, for every application this job tracker will be created and the, the tasks of that job or the application will be uh, actually running using the task using the task tracker. So, this particular uh, uh, combination of these two different services run by the MapReduce and SDFS uh, will run on will be launched on the same set of uh, the nodes. So, hence two pieces of Hadoop are the two major components of the Hadoop are SDFS file system and the MapReduce parallel processing framework and that will map and reduce the data means that the data which is stored by SDFS will be performed for computation that is called parallel processing framework given by the map and reduce. So, the programs which are called map will reach the computation wherever the data is stored called a map and after performing those computation the, the aggregate values are being collected that is called reduce of that particular on that data item. And these technologies were initially uh, conceived at the Google and which was open source by the uh, Yahoo that is an Apache uh, Hadoop which is basically is available on uh, free for big data computation.
Here in this particular high level architecture, we have referred the, the names like task tracker, job tracker and name nodes and data nodes. All these different uh, components which we have used here in this high level infrastructure uh, for describing the architecture of Hadoop uh, is going to be described in more detail in further slides. So, let us see the inside of SDFS very briefly and we will discuss SDFS separately in much more detail. So, SDFS stands for Hadoop distributed file system which is a scalable reliable distributed computing or storage uh, platform and this particular platform is written in the Java. Now, the node in Hadoop instance has a single name node and also the different data nodes together will form an, H, an HDFS cluster. So, that means that in HDFS cluster the there is one node which is called as a name node, there is a single name node and there are multiple data nodes which basically will be uh, running this HDFS cluster. Now, each HDFS will store the large files typically in the range of gigabytes to terabytes and now the petabytes across multiple machines and it can achieve the reliability by replicating across multiple hosts and therefore, does not require any range storage on the hosts. So, let us see the more details of uh, these name nodes and data nodes in this particular diagram. You see that there is a single name node and there are multiple data nodes which are running on different machines. Let us assume that this rack has machine 1, machine 2 and machine 3 different nodes. Similarly, on another rack it has uh, another machine that is machine number 4 and machine number 5. These different 1, 2, 3, 4 these machines are running the data nodes and there is one of them will be running a single name node on the same machine. Let us assume that this particular SDFS this is the architecture of SDFS when it runs on the on the, on the uh, cluster which comprises of several racks. So, whenever a client wants to do the operation which is called the write operation and the read operation, they have to go through this particular name node and name node will then guide them where the data is stored actually and the closest of them for example, data is stored at the node 3 and as far as node 4. So, it will prefer the closest one this is called closest to provide the high bandwidth access to the data. Similarly, uh, and it, it will write on uh, this particular the closest one and then all the replicas for example, replication of this particular data at more than one uh, nodes will be uh, done in the terms of blocks that is called replication. These details we are going to explain in the further slides in more detail. Similarly, there is another operation which is called a read. So, when a client wants to read a particular data which is stored in SDFS, it will know through the name node where those data is stored and then the closest one or the nearest one uh, replica will serve as the read for that client. Now, as far as the name node is concerned, there is a single name node it will keep track of the data which are now stored on the data nodes whether they are alive or they are dead. So, hence these heartbeats are continuously exchanged between the name node and the data node to know the position and the situation of the, the data which is being managed by or is stored by the data nodes. And whenever they are down 
that means a fault tolerance has to take place then it will be removed out of this name node name node will not give the reference to all other clients request for that particular data node referencing and whenever again it will come up then again it will be modified or it will be uh, made consistent uh, synchronized with all the previous uh, updates for the replicas and then only it will be made available uh, to the further client requests. Now, there is a single name node which is uh, prone to the failure single point failure to avoid this kind of situation a secondary name node uh, passively uh, try to keep a, a most recent backup. So, if the name node downs then uh, secondary name node uh, can become uh, the, the, the primary name node and can and continue to uh, operate uh, in this environment that is Hadoop distributed file system operations. Now, the compute engine which is called the MapReduce engine uh, will perform the parallel computation over this architecture which is provided by SDFS. So, if you see here uh, that uh, SDFS was having name node and the data nodes the similar kind of notion MapReduce also will provide. So, MapReduce will have the job tracker and a task tracker. So, job tracker will now keep on uh, 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 tracking or keep on communicating with the help of task trackers and the task trackers will actually use the, uh, the data nodes and perform the computations that is the map operation wherever the data is available that is done by the task tracker. And uh, after the computation the reduce function will be performed and hence there is a combination of a job tracker and a task tracker. So, again let us summarize the typical map reduce engine will consist of a job tracker to which the client application can submit the map reduce jobs and this job tracker typically pushes the workouts to all other available task trackers. So, as I told you that this job tracker will push out to all other task trackers. Now, it is the cluster now which is there in the cluster struggling to keep the words as close as close to the data is possible and uh, it will be uh, done through the balancing. So, all these optimizations are basically online managed by these set of task job tracker and the task tracker combination in the MapReduce engine. Now, the next important component of the Hadoop is called YARN. Now, uh, YARN has uh, uh, YARN is there to provide two important services one is called resource manager which is, is which is at the core at the heart. The other one is called scheduling how this particular different resources are scheduled to the MapReduce jobs. And this task, this is the task of the YARN. So, YARN enhances the power of the Hadoop compute cluster without being limited by the map reduce, map reduce kind of framework. Now, its scalability is great in the sense that the processing power and the data center continue to grow quickly because YARN's resource manager focuses exclusively on scheduling. It can manage those very large clusters quickly and easily. So, YARN is completely compatible with MapReduce and existing MapReduce application and end users can run on top of YARN without any disrupting of their existing processes. Let us see through this particular figure about the components of the YARN. So, YARN has two components here shown as the resource manager and the node manager. So, there is a single resource manager. So, whenever the client submits their job let us say it is a map reduce job which requires the resources uh, to be allocated hence this is acting as the resource manager. 
So, the resource manager after receiving the request from the client, it will now contact to the node manager and the node manager in turn will, uh, uh, will assign the, the resources. As far as uh, the uh, application is concerned, every application has a application master and uh, whatever resources is being allocated by the node manager through the resource manager, these particular uh, uh, are assigned to the application master and which is known as the container. Here they are shown as in the pink color. So, this particular application master will know where what are the different uh, containers are allocated by the node by the node manager and this particular application master will independently run. So, these application master container they are are the resource blocks which are allocated by the resource manager with the help of node manager. So, node manager resource manager and the node manager is the client server architecture of the YARN resource manager and the node manager is client server architecture. So, YARN is uh, work in the client server architecture where the node manager uh, will uh, take the request from the client and with the help of several node managers it is trying to allocate the resources and do the scheduling of these activities. We are going to discuss this in more details. Now, we will see that uh, the transition from Hadoop 1.0 to Hadoop 2.0. So, Hadoop 2.0 has become very much flexible. So, newer applications are also uh, able to execute or under Hadoop 2.0, which was not possible uh, using uh, these drawbacks of Hadoop 1.0. Let us see uh, these details why nowadays we are using Hadoop 2.0 and discarded to use the original Hadoop 1.0. So, Hadoop 1.0 has two components only that is HDFS and MapReduce. So, that means the resource management and scheduling also was the part of the, the programming paradigm that is called MapReduce. With this release of this responsibility, a yarn is being included. So, the resource management and scheduling uh, which is done by the yarn. So, yarn is a cluster resource manager and uh, HDFS therefore, has some more uh, capabilities added. Hence, its name is HDFS version 2 and uh, which supports to run the yarn on top of it. And uh, above that yarn, there is a execution engine which is called a Tage. And uh, in some of the distributions, this Tage is used. And above Tage, this MapReduce uh, programs will run as the batch uh, processing of the big data computations. There are other applications such as Pig High, which used to run earlier in the version uh, MapReduce version one. Uh, uh, above the MapReduce, nowadays uh, this Pig and Hive uh, are now running uh, using the MapReduce and uh, this version two, which is shown over here, Pig and Hive that is uh, running continuously. Similarly, other applications such as the stream processing, uh, graph processing, and uh, uh, machine learning all uh, they run uh, uh, and Storm and Giraffe they run above the YARN system without uh, uh, the MapReduce. So, MapReduce 2.0 provides a more general processing framework that is not constraining to this map and reduce kind of processes. So, the fundamental idea behind MapReduce 2.0 is to split two major functionality of a job tracker uh, resource management and the job scheduling and monitoring to two separate units. Hence, uh, some of the uh, responsibilities that is the resource management responsibilities of a Hadoop uh, of a MapReduce point 1 is now broken up as uh, MapReduce version 2 and YARN. Hence, this becomes more flexible and uh, for paving a way to a newer application that we will see which are possible under Hadoop 2.0 version. So, what is a YARN? 
So, Jan is a, uh, a resource manager that is the full form of Jan is yet another resource negotiator. So, Jan enhances the power of Hadoop compute cluster without being limited by the map and reduce. So, all these things we have already covered. Now, let us go and see what do we mean by the Hadoop zoo. Now, in this Hadoop ecosystem, we see there are lot of icons and most of these icons that is Hadoop is representing a, a toy elephant. Similarly, there are some toy pig and uh, all these different animals which are becoming an icon to these applications uh, require a coordination service. Hence, the word zookeeper is being used as the coordination service. So, we will see all these more applications in more detail one by one. Now, before that we will see the distributions. So, the distributions of Hadoop or this big data is called the stack. So, initially uh, it was uh, the, the Google GFS, Google file system and the map reduce. Hence, it was called a Google stack initially. So, Google stack was using initially the Google file system and the map reduce and it was also using the database which is called a big table and MySQL gateway and, uh, and so on. So, this was called a Google stack. So, the now as far as the next distribution of this Hadoop uh, is another distribution is uh, from the Facebook and under this particular distribution we see that uh, there will be uh, there is uh, Hadoop and then Zookeeper, HBase, Hive all these different applications together will give another uh, stack Yahoo's version of uh, this distribution is called Yahoo stack which is nothing but a Hadoop stack. So, Hadoop stack also contains uh, Hadoop and uh, this uh, HBase and all these components which are shown over here. LinkedIn, LinkedIn uh, distribution is also called its version of stack. The most important uh, uh, version, uh, most important distribution is called the Cloudera's distribution. Now, let us see the Hadoop ecosystem and its major component. Let us start with a with a scoop. So, you see that a scoop uh, uh, is a application of the Hadoop ecosystem. So, Apache scoop uh, is full form uh, is uh, basically the uh, SQL on Hadoop. So, you see that the SQL is basically the database and uh, this entire database is now pulled into the Hadoop system hence it is called scoop that is SQL on the Hadoop it is. So, it is the tool and it is the application for efficiently transferring bulk data between the Apache Hadoop and the SQL uh, data store. Now, the next application is we are going to touch upon is Apache HBase. So, HBase is a key component of Hadoop stack and it and its design catered to the application that require really fast random access to the significant data set. So, it is HBase is nothing but a column oriented distributed database management system uh, which is based on key value store. The design of HBase is based on the original Google's big table and it can hold extremely large data, data set for storage and retrieval purposes. So, it is, a, it is uh, now based on the dynamic data model and it is not a uh, relational DBMS hence it's, it is a no SQL data model. The next application is called the pig which is a scripting a language on top of Hadoop MapReduce. So, instead of going to the complication of a complex MapReduce application program, rather 
uh, simple view of this uh, scripting language uh, is being provided and that language is called a pig latin and this is useful for the data analysis and as the data flow. So, it is based on data data flow model and it was originally developed at Yahoo in 2006. And pig is used for ETL and uh, here you can see that the, the traditional uh, ETL technologies ETL stands for extract, transform and load. So, uh, out of uh, the different databases it will store and uh, this pig is used for uh, doing the analysis. The next application is Hive which is an SQL query. So, using SQL query uh, over the map reduce this uh, Hive will basically perform the, the storage system and uh, the, the analysis in a much easier manner. Another uh, uh, application is called Uzi and here the workflow scheduler uh, system is to manage the Hadoop jobs using Uzi. So, Uzi is another a coordinator uh, of jobs and it supports MapReduce, Pig, Hive and Scoop. Another coordination service is called a Zookeeper which provides uh, the coordination service and it will give you a centralized service for maintaining the configuration and the naming service. It provides the distributed synchronization and the group services. Finally, uh, another application is called a Flume which is a distributed reliable uh, available service for efficiently collecting, aggregating, moving uh, um, uh, large amount of data into the of the logs into the SDFS system. Hence, it is used for data injection. It is used for data injection that is the Flume system. Now, another component is called the Impala and that is nothing but an analytics engine uh, which is SQL based engine. So, its query engine runs on top of uh, Apache Hadoop. So, Impala brings a scalable parallel database technology to the Hadoop and allows user to submit low latency queries within a particular system. Now, another component which Hadoop supports is the Spark, which is uh, uh, Spark is a fast general uh, purpose engine for a large scale data uh, processing. So, Spark is a scalable data analytics platform and it supports the in memory computation and hence uh, uh, its performance is uh, much better why because it supports in memory computation. So, Spark uh, supports uh, a, a complex kind of analytics which is called a big data analytics and hence it is of great interest in today's uh, big data computation is Spark engine. So, the Spark engine uh, Spark uh, has the performance 100 times faster than uh, uh, for applications if Spark is used. So, uh, conclusion in this lecture we have discussed the components and the applications of Hadoop ecosystem and also we have covered about its execution environment. Thank you.